Chapter 27 Enlightenment, whether it's desired or not, can come from the most unlikely sources. Um, Bella's okay, but I've got to go, Alice, I said quickly. Edward, she yelled. I snapped the phone shut. Jacob had not closed the door when he left, and Leah slunk in now, her lilt gray form curving around the corner of the door. She had seen Jacob driving off. She had seen the look on his face. Seth was screaming in her head. Get out of there, Leah. You're too angry. Let me talk to them. He was racing towards the house, flying through the woods many miles out. She ignored him, her angry eyes on me. I stood, angling my body in front of Bella. Rosalie remained behind Bella, hands clutching the couch in tight fists. Hello, Leah, I murmured. She growled. What did you do to Jake, you putrid bloodsucker? I started slightly at the venom in her words. Leah, listen, I said, raising my hands in front of me. She crooked her head, peering around me at Bella. Or maybe I should ask her. I took a step forward, trying to divert her attention from Bella back to me. No one intentionally tried to hurt Jacob, I said softly. Her head swung back to me, and the growl grew louder and deeper. The hair on the back of her neck stood up, and she bared her teeth. Liar, she thought. I heard Bella gasp, and I moved my arms out in a protective gesture. There was a blur of gold, and then Jasper stood in front of me, inches from Leah. He and Alice had come in the back door, and he had left the space of the room. He crouched down, snarling quietly and Leah stumbled backwards a couple of steps, the growl dying in her throat. She sniffed and tried to look around him at me. What happened to Jake? What did you do? The searing misery of Jacob's expression as he drove past her was burned into her mind. She had raced to catch the car, but Jacob had no intention of stopping or turning back. We didn't do anything to him, I said, although I wondered if that was really true. You see, he was here with us when I realized that I could hear the thoughts of the child, when I understood he wasn't a monster. Leah's eyes widened in shock, and I heard a sharp hiss from Alice by the door. Jasper's head whipped towards me. What the hell are you talking about, Edward? I waved away the question. We could explain after Leah left. Child? Leah's teeth bared. I assume you mean the thing she's carrying, the thing causing this whole spectacle. So what? What about Jake? Well, I tried to think of the best way to explain it. Everything changed, you see, when I understood his thoughts. And for Jacob, well, he was upset that I... Well, I thought it would be easiest if he left. She stared at me for a moment, then snarled deeply and turned around. I relaxed, letting out my breath, and Jasper straightened up. But Leah didn't move towards the door. She moved swiftly out of our view into the dining room. Jasper glanced at me. She's going to phase, I whispered in surprise. Leah, no, Seth shouted, and then he was gone. We both felt the vibrations in the next room, the intangible movement of the air as a body transformed. Stupid, filthy, reeking bloodsuckers! Leah fumed, furious to have to face us in her human form, but she wanted answers. I stiffened with concern. There was the swift sound of clothes being pulled on, and then she appeared at the door. I had never actually seen Leah before with my own eyes, only through the thoughts and memories of others. Her face and hands were dirty, and her hair was matted and stood out from her head. It was hard to see in her the girl she had once been. Oh, my, thought Alice, taking in her tattered clothes. Her fashion sensibilities were being seriously insulted. She dresses even worse than Bella. Leah marched over to me, shoving at Jasper to move when he stepped in her way. He glanced at me incredulously. Is she for real? I shrugged and then nodded, and he moved a couple of steps aside. I'd much rather she spoke to me than Bella. Plus Jacob was the pack leader, and she deserved answers. She came and stood right in front of my face. Leah's eyes narrowed into slits. 
So I get it, she snarled. You can hear its thoughts, and so you're happy all of a sudden, and it's get out, Jake. We don't need your help any more. Thanks for the memories. No, Leah, of course not, I said, exasperated. Oh, Leah, no, it's not like that. Did you talk to him? Bella said from behind me. I shook my head, waving my hand behind me, trying to silence her. But before I could stop her, as if she couldn't help herself, Bella went on. Did he say if he was coming back? That was a mistake. Leah's eyes burned in her head as she turned her furious glare on Bella. Are you serious? she snarled. Look, I'm sorry you've got some half-breed freak inside you that's going to tear you to shreds. That really sucks. But after everything you've done to him, you are, incredibly, still asking him to come back? Bella made a gasping sound. Leah's hands curled into tight fists. You just can't stop yourself from dragging him down into your personal hell, holding him here to watch you die for another man and his killer offspring. I don't know what to make of you. If you're delusional, cruel, or just plain heartless like the blood-sucking vampire you want to become. Hey now, I snapped, putting a hand on her arm. She had no right to talk to Bella this way. She smacked me away, breaking a small bone in her finger. She didn't even flinch. Her eyes flashed at me and then back to Bella. Do you have any idea what it's like to be in his head? Do you have any idea what kind of pain he is in? She eyed me. I'll bet your vamp does, and he doesn't tell you. Do you understand how much he loves you? How you tore him to pieces when you used him as a bloodsucker stand-in when this leech left you and then threw him aside when he came back? I started to speak, but she barreled on. And now here you are again, married, knocked up, and still hanging on to him, still using him, still hurting him. Leah, choked Bella. She was starting to cry. The baby was very still absorbing this new voice in his world. I don't want to hurt Jake. I love him. Don't say that, Leah shrieked. How can you say that and keep torturing him again and again? He's been torn apart, dying along with you. You're so selfish. Leah was breathing hard, her pulse racing. I glanced at Jasper, concerned, unsure how developed Leah's control was. He nodded and closed his eyes, trying to calm her. Leah sensed him immediately. Manipulative bastards. She turned her face to Jasper. Don't even try it, she snarled. I know all about you. Don't mess with me. But Jasper's calm had the intended effect, whether she liked it or not. She drew in a deep breath, turning back to Bella, her voice quieter. Jake is my pack leader and my friend. He is good and kind and strong. He is loyal to his family and friends. He's even loyal to you and your blood-sucking husband, after all you've done to him. Do you understand what that loyalty is costing him? Tears streamed down Bella's face as she nodded. For God's sakes, enough with the waterworks, Leah thought. She tried to soften her expression. He deserves so much more than this half-life you forced on him, she said, her voice lower now, fervent. He shouldn't have to keep paying for your mistakes. He needs a chance to heal. He deserves love and happiness, not pain. I was shocked by how much Leah felt for Jacob, how deep the bond ran now, that Leah felt it had been Jacob who had given her a way out of her own pathetic half-life. You're right, Leah, Bella sobbed. I know I shouldn't ask him to be here. I can't explain it. It's just that I need him so much right now. Leah's temper exploded. You're impossible. Have you heard anything I've said? Don't you care what he needs? How he feels? Leave him alone. The air around her began to shimmer, and she took a step forward. Leave him alone, she shrieked. I hissed, moving a step backwards to protect Bella. Alice and Rosalie appeared quickly at my side. Jasper had had enough. He stepped forward and grabbed her arm. It's time for you to go, he snarled, pushing her backwards. No, Jasper, gasped Bella. What if I'm not ready to leave, hissed Leah. Am I allowed to kill her, Edward, Jasper thought. Not yet, I muttered. I was infuriated. I should have thrown her out the second she opened her mouth, 
rather than let her go on and heard Bella like this. I took a step towards her, and Alice and Rosalie closed in behind me. "'Don't hurt her, Edward!' cried Bella, trying to see around them. I would not hurt her if she left right now. Leah's hands were beginning to shake. Her thoughts were angry and disordered. "'Get out of here, Leah!' I snapped. "'So help me. Get out before you phase, or we'll throw you out!' A body ran swiftly through the front yard, and large footsteps pounded up the front stairs. The door swung open, and Seth stood in the frame, breathing hard, dressed only in a hastily pulled-up pair of pants. He looked around the room, seeing we were all still standing, still in one piece. "'I'm in time,' he thought in relief. "'Hi, guys,' he said. Rosalie hissed at him, but he didn't acknowledge her. He moved slowly into the room towards his sister. "'Hey, Leah.' His eyes hardened slightly as he saw Jasper's hand on her arm. Jasper let go and took several steps backward. Leah was still trembling slightly, her expression blank, but her eyes still fixed on Bella. Seth took her hand and tugged gently, leading her out. "'We'll just be going now,' he said. He looked in concern at Bella whose face was bright red and streaming with tears. Uh, sorry. They disappeared out the door, phasing as soon as they hit the woods. Leah, what did you say? Seth thought. I shut them out. It was quiet for a minute, except for Bella's breathing, which hitched erratically. Well, that was unexpected, commented Alice, and then Bella burst into raking sobs. Rosalie sat down quickly on the edge of the couch next to her, trying to comfort her, but Bella pushed her hands away. "'Oh, God!' she cried, her voice bordering on hysterical. "'She's right. She's so right. What am I doing to Jake? I'm hurting him so much. I'm a selfish monster.' Her hands wrung together, twisting as she struggled to get up. I groaned, grinding my teeth together. Damn that, Leah. I was going to talk to Jacob about this, if he came back. I eyed Jasper, and he nodded, turning to face Bella. He went all out, sending a crushing wave of lethargy at her. Her hands relaxed, and her heartbeat slowed. Stop it, Jasper, she muttered, but she sank back into the couch, her head laying back and her eyelids fluttering. Don't, she groaned. I don't deserve it. But she lay quiet, still. All right, Edward, said Jasper, moving to put his arm around Alice. Explain what's been going on. I walked over to Bella, taking her hand in mine. I can hear the baby's thoughts now, I said softly, looking between the two of them. Baby? Alice thought in disbelief. I nodded. I glanced back down at Bella, and she raised her head a little to meet my eyes, smiling slightly. Jasper's face was skeptical. "'You can hear its thoughts?' he asked, gesturing towards Bella. I nodded again. "'And?' he prompted. "'And so what does that mean?' "'I was wrong,' I said simply. "'The child is good, gentle and kind. He doesn't want to hurt Bella. He loves her.' Bella squeezed my hand lightly. Alice's eyebrows flew up. She and Jasper exchanged a glance, and she reached forward to touch my arm. "'Maybe you should have gone hunting, Edward,' she said quietly. "'No,' I groaned, shaking her off. "'I'm not hallucinating or going crazy.' "'Come on, you guys,' said Rosalie. "'Don't you see? Edward can hear the baby now. He wants him, too.' just like Bella and me. He's on our side now. Jasper's face hardened at this. Shut up, Rosalie, I muttered. It's not like that. So, Alice said slowly, you can hear the fetus's thoughts now, and everything is okay? Her eyes continued to be skeptical. Just like that? I had never realized how difficult it would be to make the others understand. Alice and Jasper had been my faithful supporters during the war I had created, loyal to what I wanted for Bella, and concerned for her in our own right. 
I had been able to actually experience the child's mind, to wrap myself in his thoughts, and realize what he meant to me. But for Alice and Jasper, it was harder to comprehend the change. I would have to peel away the animosity, the deep-rooted fear and anger that I myself had created. No, I said quietly. Everything is not okay. Bella is still in grave danger. I looked at Alice and Jasper. Their expressions were guarded. I went on, my voice soft. But when I saw into his mind, when I shared his thoughts, I knew he wasn't a monster. He couldn't be. And then when I realized he loved Bella, I paused, thinking about how to express what I had felt in that moment. When I understood that, I knew he belonged with us, and I loved them both. Edward, Alice whispered, her eyes wide with amazement. Alice, Bella said, reaching for her hand. Alice gave it to her slowly. He's happy. He likes to listen to our voices. He's trying not to hurt me. Alice looked down, wanting to believe her. She wondered how to see past all the pain and danger for Bella and find something good. Alice, Jasper, I murmured. I know this must seem like a very sudden change of heart, and after everything I've said and the way I've acted, I don't blame you for not trusting this right away, for not trusting me. I swallowed hard. I just wish that you could hear what I can in his thoughts and see how much he loves Bella. She is his whole world. I brushed Bella's cheek lightly. It's not that we don't trust you, Edward, said Alice. We just need to adjust a little, to understand. He's really trying not to hurt Bella? Yes, I said quietly. He's amazingly aware. He is taking in everything around him, and he is trying very hard not to move in a way that hurts Bella. Suddenly, Jasper, who had been standing behind Alice, drew in a sharp breath. My God, he whispered. We all looked at him quickly. He was staring intently at Bella, eyes burning vivid gold. I feel him, he said slowly. I feel him separate from Bella. I didn't realize it before. I didn't try. Moving very, very slowly, allowing me to determine he was safe. He moved around Alice and approached Bella, dropping to one knee beside the couch. He put his hand over her body, and then, very gently, placed just his fingertips on her stomach. Oh, he breathed. We watched him as he silently took in the child's feelings, adjusting himself to this new emotional landscape. There are definitely two distinct sets of emotions, he said slowly. Although they are tied together... Bella, you are a little anxious, and that anxiety does color what, uh, he is feeling. But his own emotions are stronger, separate. What is he feeling? asked Rosalie. Happiness, said Jasper, his voice tinged with surprise. Love. He closed his eyes and inhaled deeply, as if drawing these emotions into himself so different from the agony and despair he had been such a part of lately. No, he thought, not a monster. His eyes opened, clear and calm, meeting mine. His thoughts were still shadowed with skepticism, but he couldn't deny the gentle goodness that flowed from the baby. Do you see? I whispered. Jasper nodded slightly. I think I do, Edward, he thought. I'm trying. Jasper looked up at Alice. I can tell you this much, he said softly. It's wonderful to share his emotions, to feel the happiness and contentment that he feels. Oh, Jas, murmured Alice, seeing the reflection of the child's emotion in his eyes. She sat down on his knee, kissing his cheek, and then turned to look at Bella. He loves you, she said quietly, disbelief battling hope. Bella nodded. Alice reached out hesitantly and put her hand on Bella. He can really hear my voice? She asked Bella, glancing at me, and I smiled and nodded. He's listening right now. He is familiar with your voice.
And I'm sure he loves it, Bella said. You're his aunt. Alice blinked. His aunt? Yes, silly, laughed Bella. Aunt, Alice thought, turning the concept around in her mind. She wasn't really sure what the word meant to her. She had no context to put it in. Left without human memories, Alice had very little experience with babies, or family in general, outside of our small clan. But I love Bella, she thought. And I love Edward, so how could I not love what is theirs? Bella put her hand on Alice's, and they smiled at each other. Then Alice's eyes found mine. Oh, Edward, she thought. To see you happy again? If only I could have foreseen this. So much might have been different. I'm so sorry. She burdened herself too much, fiercely regretting her inability to see, feeling she had let me down. What she didn't realize was that she was so much more than her gift. It was her simple presence and support that gave me strength. I smiled at her, shaking my head slightly. I reached out my hand, and she put hers in it, squeezing gently. I gave her hand a quick kiss, before releasing it. Alice moved her hand back to Bella. This would be a lot more enjoyable without the headache, Alice said. I wonder when... She cut herself off, glancing at Bella, but it was too late. Oh, Jake, Bella moaned, tears filling her eyes again. She covered her face with her hands. Sorry, Edward, thought Alice, grimacing. I sighed and patted Bella's back. Where are the others? I asked. They went looking for more blood to buy. Carlyle sent back what he could. It's on the back porch, said Jasper. Where's Emmett? asked Rosalie. Why didn't he come back? Well, Alice spoke up, glancing quickly at Jasper. They were heading into some heavily populated areas, and near a hospital, and, well, Carlyle thought it would be best to keep Emmett with him. Jasper's mouth was in a thin line. He resented Carlyle's implication of his weakness, and there had apparently been some kind of argument. And Jasper didn't want to leave me, Alice continued. So here we are. Sorry, Rose. Carlyle is going to call me when they start to head home, so I can watch the route home they take. Rosalie was disappointed, bursting to talk to Emmett. Maybe I'll give him a call. And I need to talk to Carlyle, I said. Bella was still sobbing quietly. I leaned over close to her. What can I do to make you feel better? I asked softly. Nothing, she said. How about a bath? suggested Rosalie. Bella looked up and then looked at me. If Edward will help me, she said softly. Of course, I murmured. It would be a good way for her to relax, and it would give Alice and Jasper a chance to talk privately about everything. Rosalie went upstairs to fill the large tub with Jets and Esme in Carlyle's room. I rubbed Bella's back gently as she cried, until I heard the faucets turn off, and then I scooped her up gently in my arms. As we went upstairs, we passed Rosalie heading down. She was heading towards the kitchen. Feeling she was finally freed from the necessity of protecting Bella from me at all times, she was anxious to work on something. She was worried about how we would feed the baby. Soon after we had arrived home, Rosalie had had Emmett purchase some baby supplies, including bottles, formula, and diapers. I had been absolutely furious at the time, thinking it was idiocy that would only encourage Bella more. My reaction seemed obviously short-sighted now. I just hadn't wanted to consider anything about what might happen after the birth. I had only wanted to think about Bella. Rosalie was concerned about the traditional baby bottles. If the child's teeth were anything like ours, she was concerned what he might do to a rubber bottle. Inspired by her metalwork in creating the dog bowl for Jacob, she wanted to create something stronger for the baby to drink from. Some sort of bottle-cup hybrid that she referred to in her mind as a sippy cup. I shook my head. At least she had more of a plan than I did. Bella and I entered the steamy bathroom. I set her down standing on the bathroom floor and gently removed her clothes. 
She clung to my shoulders as I bent down to take the socks off her feet. When I stood up, she wrapped her arms around me, and I placed my hands on her back. "'Want to join me?' she asked, smiling, cheerful again. I leaned over and kissed her forehead. "'I remember the baths we took together on the island,' she said, her voice dancing. "'I do, too,' I whispered. Her skin pulsed beneath my hands. My palms tingled, wanting to move, to explore her. I felt a shiver run through her body. "'But I think the last thing you need is a giant ice cube in the bath with you.' I grinned at her. "'Plus I'm not sure if there's room for more than just you in there.' "'Hey!' she said, hitting my arm, feather against steel. I leaned down and carefully picked her up and lowered her into the tub. "'Ah!' she sighed, sinking into the warm water, the jet sending bubbling streams around her. At the same time, the baby sensed the enveloping warmth, as well as Bella's relaxation, and rolled contentedly. I laughed softly. "'What?' Bella asked. "'I think the baby likes the bath as well.' With Bella's stomach exposed to the light, the baby's world was brighter, twilight instead of night. "'Bath, bath,' he repeated my words, my voice in his thoughts. I realized suddenly that his mind was not just enjoying our voices, it was also memorizing our words, creating a vocabulary that would later be placed into context. As I gently washed Bella, and she laid back with her eyes shut, I marveled at this advanced development. I had been, briefly, in the minds of babies before. I had caught the wisps of thoughts emanating from pregnant women. This mind was far beyond anything I had encountered at this stage of development. I felt a strange, warm sensation in my chest, something I realized akin to pride. I paused suddenly, my hand on Bella's stomach, looking down. The bruises were of course still there, grotesque, some dark and fresh, others an unsettling shade of yellow. It was an odd sensation to feel the familiar horror and guilt and yet also to finally begin to understand why she was willing to bear them. I traced one of the bruises with my finger, thinking about all that they symbolized that I hadn't been able to see before. The marks reflected her limitless devotion to her unborn child. They were the tangible evidence of her willingness to sacrifice her body to what she considered a greater love, just as she had always been willing to sacrifice her body, her human body, for our love. My fingers moved over the dark, black and purple marks, snow against storm clouds, not really touching, but instead gliding over the warmth trapped between her skin and mine. I leaned over and kissed the modded skin gently. As I came back up, I noticed Bella's face was turned to me. Her eyes were liquid, glittering brown gems set in the pale landscape of her skin. I smiled, and she smiled back the movement forcing out tears, which emerged from the corners of her eyes and trailed down her face, soon indistinguishable from the moisture of the bath. I washed Bella's hair, rinsing it with clean water from the tap. I lifted her out, wrapping her in a large towel, and carried her into the bedroom, sitting her on the bed. As I closed the door, I heard Rosalie approach. She sat outside the door, waiting for me to finish with Bella. She was anxious to call Emmett, and knew I wanted to talk to Carlyle as well. I looked through the pile of clothes, pulling out a pair of drawstring pajama pants and a large t-shirt. Bella sat on the bed, quiet and somber now. I could guess what, who she was thinking about. Edward, she said quietly, is Jacob really in bad pain? Tell me what he's thinking. I came over to the bed with the clothes and started to help her get dressed. I don't want to share his private thoughts, Bella. It's bad enough that I intrude on them. She laughed, short and hard. You've never had a problem letting me know what Jacob's thinking before. She didn't know how inaccurate that statement was. There had been so much I had not said, not shared from Jacob, for so many reasons. I'd like to say out of respect for his privacy 
but the truth was it was more often fear, anger, or jealousy. I remember driving Bella to La Push, listening to Jacob's thoughts scream at me from a mile out. I'm not going to make it easy for you any more, bloodsucker. I'm going to tell her I love her, that I want her to choose me, and we both know I'd be so much better for her. And what could I have said? I had to let her go her own way, and she might have misinterpreted my intentions if I told her before he said anything, so I had only been able to watch her go and wait to see if she would return. Bella placed a hand on my cheek, pulling me out of my memory. I sighed and sat on the bed with her. Yes, he is in pain, I said. He's worried for you, like all of us. But it's worse, she said softly. When he's here, around me, around us. I took her hand, kissing her fingertips. He still loves you, Bella. You're hard to get over. Believe me, I know. Impossible, if I had ever even tried. And I keep forcing him to visit, to stay. Her voice was shaking. She started to cry again. You're not forcing anyone, Bella. Jacob is his own person, and he makes his own choices. You can't feel bad if he chooses to continue seeing you. That's not your fault. Bella swallowed a sob. Oh, Edward, it's just that there's something inside me, some part of me that needs him to be here. She looked up at me quickly. You know it's not a romantic thing. I don't want to hurt you either. I nodded, sighing, and closed my eyes for a moment, for I knew that at one time her feelings had been more than friendship. It hadn't been enough, but almost enough, and I couldn't deny that seeing how much she wanted him around now, part of me feared that those romantic feelings for him still festered somewhere inside her. I knew this was just an unfounded insecurity, but I did wish I understood her pull towards him. I opened my eyes. Bella was watching me, her eyes troubled. I put my arm around her and drew her close. She relented reluctantly, leaning her body slowly towards mine. I pressed her fragile form against my chest and stroked her wet hair, smooth like silver on my palm. Drops of moisture fell from it, dampening the t-shirt against her back. She didn't want to hurt Jacob, or me, because it wasn't in her heart to want to bring pain to anyone. She would always, gladly, take that pain on herself. But sometimes, it seemed, life spun in such a way that made it impossible to go on, to live without hurting others. Bella took a deep breath and wiped tears away with the back of her hand. When Jake comes back, I'm going to tell him he doesn't need to hang around any more. Not if it's hurting him, she said. Jake, Jake. The baby replayed Bella saying his name, and then Jacob's voice. Bella. I stiffened, simultaneously rocked with sheer amazement by the child's ability to associate a voice with a name, and rubbed raw by the affection, the longing that wrapped around Jacob's voice in his mind. I was rattled, and stood up abruptly to go get Bella a sweatshirt, but she grabbed my arm, turning me back to her. Edward. Her voice was sharp. The direction of her thoughts had changed. I looked down at her. Edward, you have to promise me. If something goes badly, you have to save him first. Get him out. Her eyes bore through mine. Him first, and then me. I drew in a sharp breath. Bella, how can I promise that? I can't imagine how. You can promise me, she cried. Promise, Edward. Save him first. She struggled, wincing, hanging on to the headboard, trying to get to her knees. I reached down and put my hands under her arms, pulling her up until she was kneeling on the bed. She put both hands on my face. Promise me, Edward, she breathed. I looked down into her fathomless eyes. I had already seen that Bella was willing to trade her life for his. I knew this. I had borne witness to it every long second since we had arrived home. And I thought about what that meant, what it really meant to her, what it would mean for her to live and him to be gone. And then 
It blossomed before me, cold and certain, the utter truth of the situation I had never been able to see. The reason, I realized, why all of my attempts to save Bella when we had arrived home had been in vain. The reason I would honor her request, for simply, I could not save Bella without saving him. I could only save her by saving him. I accepted it now, this awareness of the only path to salvation, the course that would have to shape all of my decisions and actions going forward, and I just had to believe there was a way to get them both through the birth. I had already accepted that Bella would be turned, and now that I could hear the child's thoughts, and we knew that he was cognizant of his actions, there was no reason that the birth could not proceed in a planned, successful way. I will, Bella. I promise, I said. And you promise me this. You will keep your heart beating. Keep it beating for me and for him. And I will find a way to save you both. To save all of us. She nodded, blinking the tears out of her eyes. I promise, she whispered. I took her face between my hands as gently as I would cup a rose. Nothing is going to happen to you. I won't let it, I said softly. I know, she said. But if it does, I just want to know that he is safe and taken care of. Rosalie will always be here for him, I said. She's almost as attached to him as we are. Bella's forehead wrinkled. What do you mean, Rosalie? she asked her voice cautious. Rosalie and Emmett will care for him, and Esme, Carlyle, the whole family. I looked up over her head. The vision was already forming in Rosalie's head, where she sat out in the hall. She and Emmett sitting together on a porch somewhere, cradling a small, dark-haired, brown-eyed baby. I probably should have been upset that this thought came to her so quickly, but I was not. It reassured me, filled me with the knowledge that this child would be loved and cherished, always, even if Bella and I were forced to leave him behind, in our way out of this world. Edward? Bella's voice was strained. He won't be with Rosalie. He'll be here with you. You will still be here with him. I looked down at her, my hands falling to my sides. Here without you? I asked quietly. She reached out with her hand and grabbed me behind the neck. Yes, without me, she practically snarled. I shook my head slightly. Bella, you know. Yes, I know, she snapped. I know what happened last time, but this is different. Oh, God, Edward. She wailed, shaking her head. The panic in her eyes started to rise again. If something happens to me, don't do anything. Tell me you won't. You need to stay here with him. I had to move, to think. I took her hand from behind my neck, kissed it, and then turned from her and went over to the window, looking down. It was sunny today. The grass glimmered, a dozen different shades of green. I watched how the sun danced off the water flowing in the river, angled beams of reflected fire lighting up the forest around it. I thought about what it meant to be in this world without Bella, to watch over our child. I had, of course, been in the minds of parents, of human parents. I knew that they lived for their children. I knew that if tragedy struck, that one parent would live on without the other to take care of the child. But I was not human, and whatever strength those humans had that made it possible for them to carry on, I did not have it any more. It had been traded, over ninety years ago, for other, sometimes terrible, strengths. Bella was essential to my very being, and I did not exist without her. I turned from the window to face her, unable to speak. She moaned at my silence. Tell me, Edward, she said desperately. Say you won't follow me if I go. She was still on her knees on the bed, breathing hard, heart racing hands beginning to shake. Everyone paused around the house, concerned. Edward, thought Alice warningly. Jasper started to make his way to the bedroom to see if he could help calm her. 
Her heart raised faster and faster, so I did the only thing I could do in that moment. I lied. I crossed the room and pressed Bella's face to my chest, stroking her hair. Shh, Bella, don't worry, I murmured. I won't. But I could not exist on if Bella died, so I would just have to find a way to make sure that did not happen.